For anybody not already in the know, Dungeons and Dragons is coming to Dead by Daylight on June 3rd. Hey. D&D &D and us. DVDs. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? thought? Not, not me. me. The content is great, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. Instead, we're going to go over something I realized while opening chests and rolling dice in the latest PTB. How can you possibly introduce a dice roll mechanic and not have it be affected by luck? It's a missed opportunity, and it really only starts to make sense when you look further into it, so that's what we're going to do. Join me as we take a look into the luck mechanic to better understand it and why it's in the sad state that it currently is. There's a lot of things in this game that can be perceived as lucky or unlucky. I'm sure you can think of an example if you just play the game enough, but if you can't, don't worry about it. You can just copy mine. Just change them up a bit so behavior doesn't get suspicious. Have you ever spawned into a map and gotten spotted by the killer almost instantly? How about playing killer and having your hex break in 30 seconds? Or maybe you've spawned in as either side and seen a really close 3 gen and thought, that sucks. The list of scenarios truly does go on as luck is all about perception. But what if it wasn't? What if instead of just feeling lucky or unlucky, there was something you could actually do to improve your luck going into and throughout every trial? To those of you that immediately went, there's literally luck offerings in the game, what are you talking about? I don't blame you for doing so. There's nothing in the actual game that says what the luck offerings really do. So unless you've gone to the wiki to find out, or heard your favorite content creator say it, you can't really be faulted for not knowing. Allow me to set the record straight. Currently, the luck mechanic only exists to increase the likelihood of a successful self-unhook. Its entire existence in the game is only seen in a couple of places, those being the luck offerings and the four survivor perks that use it in their descriptions, two of which only show up because luck is in their names and not actually built into their perks at all. Comment down below if you can name all four. It's a shame this mechanic has existed in the background this entire time, especially when it could be really fun if fully fleshed out. It's gotten to the point where it's either going to be reworked or removed entirely, and I believe the latter would be a huge missed opportunity. How do you go about reworking luck without making it feel terrible though? I'd given it a lot of thought and not come to anything conclusive. Until recently. Easily my favorite thing about the D&D DLC is the loot perk. More than the actual playing of said loot is the dice roll animation that plays when you activate it. First off, it just hits. <laughs> I never thought rolling a dice into a daylight could be so fun. But more than that, it's made me realize the answer has been staring us in the face all along. Giving you visual feedback as to whether you're getting lucky or unlucky makes it feel really good, and that's the direction we need to take it. The end goal for any luck rework should be to make it another game within the game. You should be able to feel its effects when you're actively engaging with it, but also not have it feel bad when it's working against you. First and foremost, we need to add killer offerings to increase luck on their behalf. Luck needs to be a game mechanic that exists for both sides and can be influenced one way or the other by both survivors and killers. To some degree, that already exists, with things like being able to influence hook spawns or interacting with totems. But it could be so much more. Every time a game begins, it's on a map that has some RNG to it. If these luck offerings were used, it could increase or decrease the strength of all tiles around the map, making every map either killer or survivor sided. You wouldn't necessarily need to balance the offerings for stacking either, as you could only use the survivor team's best offering and burn any others that are used. It would also solve the problem of survivors not knowing how they should approach each game. Loading into a trial and seeing the killer burn a luck offering, I'll know this killer wants to win and play more accordingly to give them a tougher challenge. Just knowing that it's in the game would allow me to get more experimental with different perks and play styles because I'll know which games I can and can't be lollygagging before they even start. What might a killer-sided map look like? Well, it could have less jungle gyms, worse or less pallets, closer hook spawns, better totem spawns. It could be any number of things. Otstarva has multiple videos on which realms are the most fair, so you could literally have it be a realm that generally favors the killer as well if you wanted to push it further. Never so strong that a 4k is guaranteed, but strong enough that it feels like if all goes according to plan, not everybody is going to be able to make it out. It's a fine line, which just means tweaking the numbers until it's in a good spot. But again, we still don't want luck to be the focus of every trial for the rest of time, so everything we've done up until now is just what happens when you choose to run the offerings. The actual difference between a map being heavily killer versus heavily survivor sided should not be that big. For killers, it's never going to be stronger than just bringing a map offering, and that's a good thing. But for survivors, being able to stack with other things is a concern. What's going to stop people from just stacking maps and luck offerings every game? The same thing that stops people now. That being you have to get them through the blood web, 
and you have no way of reliably getting them. I spent a million blood points looking for one yellow wire spool last week, still haven't gotten it over another million blood points later. Even after all that, if you're still really concerned about the effects it could have on the game as a whole, you could also change or remove the current offerings to make them more rare. The less they're being used, the more it feels like just another small part of this massive game, and that's the end goal. But like I said, all of this is just before the trial begins. So what actually changes during the trial? Nothing, really. It will still affect unhook attempts, only now it will also affect chess loot. For it to be played by either side, killer offerings will lower the chance of unhooking yourself and make chest items less rare. Think of it like hoarder the offering, ensuring nobody gets anything too helpful. How much further you could take it by tying in other perks or mechanics is entirely dependent on getting the solid base down first. This does that and leaves plenty of room to build it up in the future. But that brings me to the end of my suggested changes to the luck mechanic. Let me know down below what you would change and whether or not you think it needs to be removed entirely. We didn't do anything crazy with the rework, and that's probably for the best. Remember that we don't need to get it right on the first attempt, but as long as we can come up with a rough idea that sounds good, we can walk away happy, and we've definitely got that here. It takes luck from an underutilized mechanic to a standalone fleshed out one just begging for more perks to be intertwined down the line. There's also lots more you could do in the future using this framework, like assigning certain events as lucky or unlucky, and literally have it change throughout the trial. Had I made this video a few years back, there would have been no hope in luck ever getting reworked. But now? A handful of perks and adjustments to add-ons and powers get changed every patch. The game has been trending in such an upwards direction compared to years past, that reworks for things like this are finally becoming possible. Hopefully soon we're talking about where to take it, but until that happens, all we can do is wait. Until then, and until next time, good luck out there in the fog.